oftentimes the tension occurs is when how they express their love conflicts with the very real systems that the hospital policies, protocols conflicts with, right? So then when you listen to them and after you have truly listen to them and acknowledge that you have listened to them, help them feel heard. Allow them to then give you the space or your team to the space to help explain the boundaries that you have to operate in, okay? And then see if there's a space that you can compromise on because I think what also leads to mistrust or feeling of miscommunication. It's like we then make promises or there's a perception that promises are made that can't be kept or, and I think that sometimes either because of guilt or because we want to please, right? I also think that within the specialty, we are people pleasers. I am a people pleaser, right? But there are certain confines that we have to operate in within the hospital and I will push boundaries is that then we also like, if we can also set up expectations with their families up front and say, okay, I've heard you. These, this is the box that I also have to operate in. Okay, so how can we meet each other so that we also know kind of like it's a truth and honesty from the beginning that helps out, that helps lay the groundwork and that maintains that that relationship of trust and transparency from the beginning. Can you give me an example of where a fam, where the boundaries of the hospital are at odds with what a family might be wanting to do? Yeah. So when I think of a family in the NICU who has um, cultures around dying um, and, for example, drums and traditional people who would come in to um, how do I say this? Kind of send their child to the next life, yeah. right? Um, within the NICU, where they have noise limitations, and they also have other patients that have to be respectful of. Um, and there is a set cultural expectation and belief that the family feels like they need to happen. But then we also have NICU policies and what we can and cannot do. So how can we understand what those boundaries are, what the family needs, and what can we do to kind of meet in the middle? So we're still respecting what they need to happen, what, how they felt that their cultural beliefs has been disrespected, how they haven't been listened to in the past, and what can we do to like, okay, acknowledge that this happened, not defend what's been happening, but explain this is where we are. How can we move forward within these boundaries and how can we kind of respect? And so I'm thinking of, it was an Afro um, indigenous um, patient we had and they just like had their boundaries but they, and they had been disrespected, right? They just had not been listened to. And I think it's because you just didn't take the time to listen and they thought they were just being quote, quote, unreasonable. Um, but they had to be defensive because they came from a position I had to fight what I wanted. I've had to fight all this time. But if you just take a moment to listen and like, okay, how can we kind of make this happen? And, that's all they that's all they needed to happen. It's mm -hmm. a great example. Ritual and rituals vary across. I mean they're and we all I mean, it's like it's so funny because we all have rituals. Like I think yeah. every culture has rituals. Yeah. I think it's just like what is different for me, what is different from you, right? 